What's it take to get some respect? Well, we'll find out this week on Motoring 2007. TSN's Motoring 2007 is brought to you by Q from Quaker State. Unleash all your horses and Michelin, a better way forward. Use of the egg as the, the cocoon for, uh, for the interior of the car. There was a day when former Nissan chief Jerry Hirschberg used to brag about Nissan's egg-shaped design. Well, declining sales proved that while nobody had anything against eggs, Few wanted their car to look like one. Well, Nissan then began the road back, introducing the 350Z, followed by a complete new-look lineup of cars, sports utes, and minivans. Well, this week we're going to check out a real workhorse for this company. It's been around since 1982, and now the Sentra is not only getting a fresh new look, it's actually moving a little closer to the front of the showroom floor. Well, Sentra is, uh, for most of its lifespan, uh, about 25 years in Canada, since 1982, uh, it has been our entry-level product. For a few years, we had another product below it called the Micra, but really, it is our uh, meat and potatoes vehicle for the, for the general public for Nissan Canada. Because we've introduced Versa below Sentra, it allows Sentra to move up market to, in a bigger and better way, to make a bigger and better car, uh, a car that's more aspirational for people who want something a little bit better. This car has a 2-liter engine now rather than a 1.8. It has 140 horsepower, 147 pound-feet of torque, and its torque peak it is at really low, 2400 RPM, so it feels really good around town. It accelerates really well on the highway. It's got a long wheelbase, a really advanced suspension system, so it rides really well, so it feels like a bigger car than it really is. The interior is about 10 cubic feet bigger than the previous generation, so it's, it is bigger than any of the other vehicles in its segment for the sedans, so lots of stretch out room in the back, lots of room in the front for large passengers as well, and it actually is larger on the inside than the 2001 Altima was, so it's a very big car. With the Sentra, it's been, uh, I guess this is the sixth, sixth generation, um, and I'm quite surprised uh, on our run up here today how much room there is in the car and the amenities that are in it for uh, you know a, a compact sized car. Uh, it was very quiet, very roomy, um, ran very, very well. It was quite impressive. We've uh, introduced our CVT transmission. We first had it on the Murano in North America, but we've been producing them for many years, since 92. It provides the customer with a very smooth response and very high fuel economy, a much better fuel economy than you'd have with a traditional stepped gear transmission. It provides a uh, uh, much better fuel economy in the Altima and in the Sentra, and we're adding it to many of our vehicles, including Maxima and all our sedans, really. They are definitely moving it up. Uh, the compact class in the last few years has become really competitive, especially in Canada. I think what you're seeing is there's no more of this sort of... Um, sort of bread box cars. They're coming with loaded with features and things like that. I mean, this one in alone, you can get Bluetooth in it, uh, Bluetooth connectivity, um, the Ultimate, you can get navigation in it and things like that. So a lot of the high-end features are starting to trickle down into some of the lower-end cars, and people are starting to have an expectation for certain things like that. I mean, they even spoke about the tires. They're 15-inch radials, uh, 205. And years ago, I mean, it was 13-inch little donuts. So, I mean, it's just things like that. Everything from the physical car to the equipment has really started to take a leap. And Nissan's following, which is, of course, a smart move. This is really the largest segment in the Canadian market with other cars uh, from Toyota and Honda uh, and the Koreans coming in. It's a huge segment that is the largest in the Canadian market, but it's also changing. There's a lot of other vehicles that are available, small SUVs, very small vans. So Sentra had to really be special in order to stand out amongst a, a compact sedan. 
the design for this vehicle was really to keep it in the Nissan family but keep it upscale. So we used a lot of design cues from our other vehicles. The overall greenhouse looks very much like the Altima. Uh, the uh, rear C pillar is very much like the Altima. The headlights and the uh, mirrors look very much like the 350Z. So there's lots of design cues from our other vehicles. standard ABS on our volume trim which is a 2.0 S trim and we have standard uh, front advanced airbags as well as side seat airbags and side curtain airbags for the front and rear passengers so it has all the safety features you need. It's always been a Sentra, it's always been entry level economy. Can they get rid of that so-called stigma even with you know what I'm getting at? Is yeah right? that mindset of that car um, that, that'll be something that the marketing guys are going to have to tackle because yes people would look at that name brand uh, that brand and, and say yeah you know that's, a, that's a, an entry level car I don't, I'm not interested and there, I think the challenge would be to get people into it and find out just what this car does have. I think the only thing that might hold it back is the CVT transmission not because it's a bad transmission but just because I don't think people generally understand CVT and it's a different driving experience whereas in a regular car with stepped gear transmission you get the, the rev and then the shift whereas with this it holds the revs and it's a different driving experience and some people might attribute that to unrefinement even though it isn't once you get used to it. The price of the new Sentra, it starts exactly the same price as the previous generation. So uh, we've made all these advances in a bigger, better, more powerful car with more safety features and it starts at the same price. And our volume trim is really uh, very close to the previous generation as well. It's moving up. Can it, can it take the pressure? Yes, it's, it's moving up and uh, I think it will. It is a, a really good step between the Versa and the Altima. The Sentra is really going to be successful for us. The birthplace of the automobile? Well, the answer, which might surprise you, coming up later on Kenzie's Corner. After leaving it to wither and almost die on the vine, GM finally decided to give its Saturn division a much needed infusion of product. The Saturn View Green Line, the first of a series of hybrids, the Sky and Sky Red Line, this week on test drive the all new Saturn Aura. Where the Aura succeeds is the blend of style and substance. The long 28-52mm wheelbase, wide stance and the XR's large 18-inch wheels give it substance. The flawless paint, jeweled headlights and LED tail lights give it style. It's a pretty package that speaks to the new design language that will filter down through the rest of the Saturn range. As is expected of any up-level sedan, this Aura comes with all the usual comfort and convenience items. The list, well, it runs from the sunroof through a wonderful radio to power adjustable pedals. Now, these things, when you combine that with the tilt and telescopic steering and a power seat, means you can find the right driving position very quickly. You'll also find steering wheel mounted paddle shifters for the six speed automatic transmission. There is, however, a fairly major pet peeve, and that is that the interior plastics simply do not measure up to the standard set by the rest of the car. The aura is also powerful. The XR and its powertrain is a delight. The 3.6 litre V6 engine uses four valves per cylinder, dual overhead cams, and variable valve timing on the intake side to bump output to 252 horsepower and a rewarding 251 pound feet of torque at just 3,200 RPM. Add the new six speed automatic transmission and its driver shift control which enables the driver to shift manually via steering wheel mounted paddles and you have a sweetheart of a powertrain. There's a strong launch off the line, a willing mid-range and yet it returned a test average of 10.3 litres per 100 kilometres which is extraordinary given the gusto. You know when you sit in the back seat you'll find exactly what you found up front. On the one hand cheesy plastics, on the other some unexpected equipment. For instance, this car came with a couple of sets of wireless headphones and some controls. Now this simple addition, it allows the driver and front passenger to listen to their music, the kids in the back, well they can listen to their nonsense. It's what the family needs. 
When it comes to ride and handling, the XR's front struts, rear multi-links and direct acting anti-roll bars follow the powertrain's lead. It has a refined feel on the highway and yet carves the pylon test with minimal amounts of body roll and understeer. The better than expected handling comes from the Euro-like tuning of the suspension and the XR's large 225-50 R18 touring tyres. The steering's feedback is also worthy of note as it boasts a strong on-centre feel and surprising precision when turned off-centre. A large family sedan requires a large trunk and that the Saturn gets, but there is a quirk. The opening right here is really narrow, so that severely limits the type of cargo you can load in the back. There is, however, a saving grace. When you go around the side, the rear doors swing open nice and wide, and as the seat backs are covered in a hard, durable plastic, this is where you load your bulky items. Anti-lock brakes and four-wheel discs are standard fare. Testing put the stopping distances at 41.2 meters from 100K, which is good considering the 1,654 kilograms it's bringing to rest. There is, however, a deadness to the pedal that requires more pressure than expected to exert maximum braking. Sweetness. This new Saturn Aura really is a very good car. It's got a honey of an engine, it handles exceptionally well, it's comfortable on the highway, and it's got all the toys one could possibly want. And even in spite of those rather cheesy plastics, this car still ranks as the best family sedan GM's ever built. Chevrolet Malibu. You know what? I really love this car, and this makeover will live on in future Chevrolets, especially this dual port grille treatment and in other cues that will define Malibu going forward, such as the raised hood design, the jeweled front and rear lamps, a longer, lower, and wider stance. Give the car a refined and a tailored look. We started with almost every designer in the building started sketching on this. Best design wins. So then you take it from there, work it into a clay model. Um, then there's several clay models you choose from. Which one's the best one? Take that one. Go to the next level, make it full size, and then start refining the design. And uh, the beauty of it, I was involved in the whole process from start to now uh, end. And it hasn't changed much from the first sketch. The exterior draws you in. The interior is, oh my gosh, that kind of seals the deal. And uh, that look of the, the dual cockpit, the contrast, the rich colors, especially in the LTZ level, which is, you know, um, has, a, has a bolder statement. Uh, we looked at our, our heritage, and uh, we wanted to play that up and kind of come in with a, a new look for Chevrolet. So the dual cockpit is something that Chevy's done in the past, but maybe not so bold. But now we want to really make it a bold statement and something that's bold along with being a little bit elegant as well. You know, mid-sized car buyers also like lots of choices, so packaging will be flexible. For example, buyers can opt for the up-level interior, but stick with the standard engine. It's not just any engine. It's an engine as powerful as the design, giving customers our latest dual overhead cam technology for reduced emissions, excellent fuel economy, and 164 horsepower. And also look for a hybrid model at the start of production. It's a youthful looking car but youthful attracts everybody. You know, so that was, that was our intent, was just to open it all up and just create an attractive design that just, you know, from 100 feet away, it's gonna bonk you over the head and you gotta come in and take a closer look. The name of the vehicle is Chrysler Aquino. Uh, where it came from was uh, my uh, senior vice president, Trevor Creed, uh, decided to uh, put my name because my name in Japanese means autumn field, which has very comfortable, serene uh, image, which fits this vehicle. Therefore, we decided to name Aquino. And I'm very, very grateful and honored. 
our intention was to broaden the perception of one box vehicle by creating a unique and artistically sculptured one box vehicle reflecting the elegance of the Chrysler brand and in interior we wanted to offer a soothing and comfortable feeling of a living room. Some of the characteristics are two interlocking forms on the roof which punctuate the design but also gives more headrooms for the rear seat passengers and on the side glass it has a um, special coating which, you, which is hard to see in but easy to see out, therefore give a privacy to passengers inside. The rear has a concave shape which reminds you of almost like an e elegant evening dress to emphasize that brand image. So what we wanted to do is um, to create a living room experience. So we look at a lot of items, materials and colors in modern homes. The front two seats are treated as if they are armchairs and rear seat is like a sofa because that's a traditional living room layout. The rear seat has a slight angle, so it's asymmetric. Therefore, it has a one door on the driver's side and two doors on the passenger side. The reason behind that is so that the three people in the rear seat can look at each other's face, so that it will be much easier to um, talk and socialize. You know, I learned years ago the hard way that if you park your car and leave anything in sight of prying eyes, consider it stolen, especially in the big cities. Always put valuables in the trunk. Or I might suggest you could buy a Nissan Sentra. They've got this cool feature. They actually have a little secret compartment hidden in behind the back seats. Now, I have some ideas where that might come in handy, but I don't want to say it. But you know what? I bet you our man in the Quaker State Garage, Bill Gardner, knows exactly what I'm thinking. How about it, Bill? Yeah, I know exactly what you're thinking, buddy, and don't you even think about smuggling something across the border in a hidden compartment or anywhere else in the vehicle for that matter, because those boys can seize your vehicle for doing stuff, dumb stuff like that. Uh, we're about 1,600 kilometers into our long-term test on the Titan pickup, and that's what I want to talk about this week. Really enjoying this truck so far, great ergonomics in the cab, especially the rear portion of the cab, tremendously big, good uh, usage of space. Very easy to get in and out. Nice uh, flat open floor area for storing cargo or any purchases that you've made legally, Brett. Uh, really enjoying this truck. One thing about uh, the Titan is we've got a hidden storage compartment in it as well. Well, it's not really hidden, but it's back here in the side of the box. And they've used this area so that you've got a lockable storage area for some dirty items you might want to keep, might not want to keep in the cab of the vehicle. Things like your cargo tie downs, and in the bottom here, I've got a chain and a tow strap that I use for extricating stuck vehicles. And when you have a four-wheel drive pickup like the Titan, you're often called upon to get that buddy's car uh, out of the ditch that's stuck in the snow or whatever. So this is a real handy thing, and it locks every time you close it. So you use the key to reopen it, and uh, that's a handy little compartment. Now, the Honda Ridgeline that we had as our, as our last long-term tester had a big lockable compartment under the floor of the bed. That's really handy too. And just another example of how user-friendly pickups are getting. Now the Titan has a lockable tailgate, so your tailgate won't get stolen when the vehicle's parked. And if you had to go out and buy a brand new tailgate for a vehicle, they're very expensive and then you've got to paint it to match, so you don't want that thing to get stolen. Another thing about the Titan is there's a balancer on the tailgate. You can see that when I let go of it, it doesn't just slam down. It comes down at a nice, slow, controlled rate, and that's thanks to a balancer built in over here. Another nice feature is these cargo lights back here in the corners, one on either side. When you're doing something on the tailgate at night, maybe doing a service call or looking through your toolbox for some small item, really handy to have a bit of light. On the left side of the box, we've got a 12-volt power outlet, so you can plug in a work light or something more powerful as well. That's a really handy feature as well. One thing I've noticed about the Titan pickup, maybe it's going to be a pet peeve, but I'm just having a hard time getting used to one particular thing on the Titan. I'll tell you about that on an upcoming episode. And uh, I think that's probably going to be one of my few pet peeves about this pickup truck. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 2007.
I crossed the border from Vermont into Stansted, Quebec the other day, gave my passport to the customs guy, and he looked at it and said, hey, you're my favorite car guy. I said, you watch motoring? He says, yeah, even though I'm francophone, it's my favorite show. Well, you know, we never get tired of hearing that. It's great to know we've got fans all across the country. Now, I didn't have time to chat with this fellow, you know, customs lineups, but I'll bet even he doesn't know that his town has a pretty good claim to being the birthplace of the automobile. Back in the late 1850s, a guy named Henry Seth Taylor built a four-wheel horseless carriage powered by steam. Now, this was like 10 years before Carl Benz starts puttering around Stuttgart. It was one of the very first successful automobiles. Now, why have you never heard of Henry Seth Taylor? Well, don't worry about it. He never heard of you either. But it's because he never went into the business. It was the only vehicle he ever built, unlike Benz and Daimler and Panhard and some of these other pioneers who turned their vehicles and their companies into huge conglomerates. Taylor went on to different things. Now, a bunch of years ago, the Anaconda Copper and Brass Company thought that Taylor's vehicle might be a good way to illustrate how copper and brass are used in the automobile industry. They were trying to expand their business. So they chased down bits and pieces of Taylor's vehicle. As I understand it, he found some components up in a barn somewhere, but they pretty much built an exact replica. And the way I heard the story, it's now in a museum up in Ottawa. So how about that? Canada, the birthplace of the automobile. Isn't it amazing the things you learn on this show? I'm Jim Kenzie. The new Sentra certainly deserves its new placing in the Nissan family. Lots of room, comfortable, ample power. Although I have to agree with Brad Horn, who earlier said that CVT transmission does take some getting used to, especially in the smaller vehicles like the Sentra and the Versa. Now still to come is the Sentra SER. 200 horsepower and apparently the list goes on. More on that on a future program. And speaking of the future, the Car of the Year special is quickly approaching. So go to motoringtv.com or link to us on tsn.ca and cast your vote in each segment. That's it for now. We'll see you next time out as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them. He's one of the very few that even is remotely connected with a car, and that's only through its title, which is Dynaflow. I had an uncle who uh, told me once when I was about 14 years old that always have a hobby where you can make money. And I took that to heart. So I've made money out of my hobby of cars, I've made money out of my love of radio, and my hobby of collecting jazz and especially big band records. And I've been doing that radio show now for more than 30 years. Edward Kennedy Ellington. TSN's Motoring 2007 has been brought to you by Q from Quaker State. Unleash all your horses. And Michelin, a better way forward.